All right, here we go, guys. Welcome to episode 22 on the 200 horsepower challenge here in Comlands. Thank you, Crustu, fellow content creator from up here in Canada. Came up with this challenge, which has been uh, really an eye opener for me. It's introduced me to all kinds of new ways of playing this game, and uh, I don't know, it's been awesome to be to be honest with you. I've really enjoyed it. Mornings like this, take check this out. It's July right now, 4:38 in the morning. We we, uh, we had a lot of grass to pick up after the last episode, and uh, anyways, I figured we better better get an early jump on it, and because uh, we have a. This will be the most action-packed. We'll spend the most money. We'll make the most money. We'll do the most stuff. Like this is an action-packed episode, so get ready. So, so anyways, they're taking this grass off. Uh, I've got a. As you can see, we're now utilizing uh, course play and auto drive together. As <clears throat> so I have a uh, worker here picking up the grass and then uh, depositing it into the fermenting silo, and then uh, and then I jump in with another uh, tractor and. Uh, Anyways, another another setup, and I, I start putting uh, grass into the the other fermenting silo next to the BGA. It's just fun to watch these guys work. I, I, I love. I can't believe I waited this long to actually put the auto driving course play into into play. But anyways, so we're gonna be jumping around a little bit here as we uh, get through the day. But uh, hang tight. All right, on the menu, money. <laughs> so um, we're not taking this up to the uh, shop yet, but I did want to stack some, uh, get some pallets stacked so we can keep spawning them. And uh, when the timing is right, uh, we will strike and run up to the uh, sell point to get rid of these. Look at that, doesn't that look so cool? Anyways, I'm amazed when I can see, uh, I see that other tractor driving around while I'm driving. Like, just makes the whole farm feel so much more alive when there's stuff happening. Not to mention, that guy's doing stuff I don't have to do now, which is even better. I'm gonna, I wanna get rid of this Kloss, uh, this Kloss forge wagon and grab another one of the, I don't know what that is that the guy there has, but I, I want another one of those, because it just holds more and, and it, all these tractors tow really well. So I'm gonna pull over here and dump into this silo. So this one I've pr pretty much, I put this one on distribute and it's just nonstop feeding that, uh, that the BGA. What are we sitting at? We'll, uh, yeah, we should be, should be about 600,000 liters of grass and then getting close to 100,000 liters of uh, silage. You can see right there, May was 39, June 69,000. I want to say we get close to 70 by day's end. Substantial amount of money to be made. I can't wait to put in a bigger uh, bigger BGA, actually. It'd be great to be making a couple hundred thousand dollars a day, but actually where I think that'll really come in handy are the hard economy maps that I've been playing or the playthroughs. That'll be a big win for us. All right, uh, we're this one. This actually, this this silo is the crazy one. Uh, about 1.1 million, 1 1.1, 1 1.2 million liters of uh, grass combo silage. Um, so silage potential, I guess. It's it's, uh, it's jam packed. <laughs> Squeeze this sucker back in here because we won't need it until later. We have two harvests to do today, uh, both of which will be providing us with straw. So we will need to. Uh, We'll need to hit the forge wagon uh, front windrow combo again at some point here. Just trying to find a good place for these things. There you go. So that's kind of the current lay of the land. So down in the bottom there, we have a canola field that's ready and we have the big wheat field actually. Um, I feel like we just planted that weed field, but it's already already ready to harvest. So I'm gonna I'm I'm I want to say this is the first go because I don't think we did as much course play and auto drive together in the last episode or any maybe um, maybe we did I don't remember but this this one we really kind of go at it and uh, I think for the most part it works well. Uh, getting the workers to to do their job. 
you'll, you'll see, I have a couple little uh, challenges, but uh, but it's fun. It's it's like, there's a lot of problem solving and and uh, a little bit of strategizing and planning involved. So it's it's been pretty uh, pretty fun. But so I've I have in at this point here, I'm still doing the carting. <clears throat> Actually, in in a lot of cases, I end up doing a lot of the carting, but uh, just because I can't keep screwing things up. But it's nice. Uh, be nice getting some of this canola into the uh, into production there, so we can continue making our oil. So this is this is a worker right now, uh, set um, following the route that we've got set up to dump into the production. There they go. They can send that canola home. Start making us some money. Uh, so here's my solution to the bird feeding. I was having a hard time hitting the trigger the last time, so we've got the pullover or the drive over. Um, soaring eagle there. This is a, I tested a little bit. It worked really well. It's kind of my best, best way of providing a nice meaty trigger for the uh, for the the cart whoever's carting the grain. So, do we move birds back and forth last time? I don't remember that either. I think we did. Oh, we did. Yeah, those ridiculous looking. So, anyways, we're gonna we got some bird moving again today. Enjoy the bird moving in this episode because I, in future episodes, will be using the, I know it's more meant for like herding your animals between fields. Uh, I don't know what you call it, but where you can hit M instead of R to access the um, the, the animal menu and, and you can essentially move your uh, animals between uh, husbandries, I guess. Is that what you call it? Um it's just a lot. I'm, I'm not. I'm not one. I'm not opposed to doing some work, but what a pain in the butt this is moving these uh, little psycho ducks back and forth every day. Uh, I'm not. No, I don't think I'm really. Uh, I don't think I'm really down for that. So uh, this will likely be the. I may do it a little bit in the future, but this will likely be one of the last times you see this process happen. I'm trying to balance these ducklings. I think that the egg production seems to compound itself because I've recorded into a couple episodes beyond this and, and the eggs are really starting to fly. What's not flying though is the productions that need to use them. So I got to figure that out. <laughs> That's always the way, right? You never, for, at first you don't have enough inputs and then uh, you hit like a tipping point and then you have too many, too much uh, and, and uh, <laughs> too, too much to process basically. Yeah, so we'll go back and forth. I think we have only one more, one more back and forth here, so we can get the, get the birds moved over. But we do have a, a healthy, a healthy population now in the big, uh, in the big building. I, I can't remember what was the number there, like fifteen hundred or something like that. No, not fifteen hundred. Four hundred and sixty-nine. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, it's a great building though. I couldn't wait to actually get animals into this building. The uh, chasing food for them has been a bit of a challenge, but that'll that'll change in a hurry once we start harvesting that big wheat field. And it's a question of just how much these guys are going to eat. Look at that, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. So there you go, there, there's, that's two workers. I, I will uh, never s stop being amazed by that process. I think it's pretty cool. Question will be, uh, yeah, I don't think I have too many problems with the guy carting and, and delivering to the bird. Sorry, and delivering to the birds as he weaves. <laughs> Watching that worker back there weave his way down the road is kind of funny. I was looking forward to harvesting this. Actually, what I will be looking forward to is when we get that next, uh, we get the next harvester. Um, that's really what I'm looking forward to. A little bit wider working with, just an overall cooler looking vehicle, taller, uh, Taller pipe so we can get a bigger trailer to cart with. 
The animations aren't always great. <laughs> but trust me, it's going in the trailer. We got lucky with the weather, too. Well, I might have spoke too soon. You'll, you'll, you'll see, to be determined. So the cows didn't really have any water, so we had to kind of get some water over here. My, the tractor was my favorite beacons. That should be an option on all tractors. So we do run run a few loads. Uh, I want to say this holds about 25,000 liters of water. So it doesn't take too long to, to get it filled up. I have this problem with the water trailer where I uh, I always forget that it's full and, and I'll go to put water in it and then realize that there's already water in it. So this is the first run to the new setup at the cow building and it functions flawlessly actually. That pullover, uh, it does move a little bit sometimes, the uh, the sort of that eagle whatever, uh, so I do got to watch that, but, uh, but yeah, this is flawless otherwise. Not too unrealistic the way it's just jamming through the side there, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so I figured while, uh, while those guys were uh, getting their field uh, harvested, I would get to work on the straw here. Canola doesn't really give you a lot of straw, but uh, I'll take anything I can get right now. Oh, guys, wait till you see the money we're going to spend today. It's crazy. You'll see at some point here, one issue that I've been having, and I don't know why. Um, so, like, for example, the co-op. Uh, can you see off? I think I saw the the, uh, the guy picking up the straw I just saw off in the distance as he was... Uh, Heading to the heading to the straw processing building. Anyways, yeah, I, I so with with the auto drive, um, I I know I fully grasp the concept of setting your waypoints beyond the um, you know like for example if it's a silo, uh, set your waypoint beyond it so that way the tractor has an opportunity to drag the uh, whatever the implement is across that uh, across that point and then, and then that'll enable it to trigger and then dump. Um, so, but like, so for example, at the co-op, uh, uh, or the sawmill, like where you would drop, where you would deliver your wood or, or for example, like grape juice. Um, so I have the trigger set, but I, I, so I set my, my, uh, you know, worker to go up there to make the delivery and they always, so prior to getting to the trigger, they always park. And I can't get them to drive over it, um, so I don't. I must be doing something wrong. I don't know what that is. So I got to figure that out. Uh, which isn't the end of the world. I mean, it's kind of nice to be there at the exciting moment when you know you're making all your money. So the worker essentially drives up to the you know the point, and then and then you have to take over and uh, and you know bring it home, so to speak. But that's kind of a pain in the butt. But anyways, at least you get to see the money coming, which is cool. Kind of just figured I'd park the camera here for a little bit and watch these clowns go back and forth. Uh, I, I was sort of hoping to see some calamity or see somebody just driving around in circles, but they actually function pretty good. I don't know what I've got set where the the um, at one point it looked like the 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 tractor and trailer was was following the harvester, which I thought was kind of funny. Right now, it looks like he's doing the right thing. He's parked. Yeah, so powerful. What a great tool. Uh, being able to set these guys up to do the work like this. It's really made me rethink the game and, and, uh, and how I want to play it with this, with the ability to use this. It's like a whole new game. Yeah. Like he's following or she. I think this was the, was it one? I want to say that I only got one load off of that canola field in straw. I don't think I had to dump prior. I'm pretty sure that's it. But again, I mean, there's 37,000 liters there, so I mean, we're harvesting anyway, so we might as well uh, might as well get the material, right? Look at all that. <laughs> you see all that cake that was sitting there? Oh man.
<clears throat> excuse me, while I get this guy started on the uh, on the straw here in a minute. I didn't want to start him too early because I didn't want him to really get in the way of the harvester or the uh, or the guy carting. But I kind of figured if I set one headland, I might be all right. And then he could just start doing his back and forth and may not interrupt anybody. So I don't think we've sold anything yet, have we? So we're $249,000. I want to say we started the day with like, oh, you know what? No, <coughs> excuse me. I think we started the day with two, around 240000 but the BJ has been going. So it's it's going to be hard because the <laughs> pylons. We, uh, we'll see some highs and lows today anyways. Be highs from when we sell and then lows when, uh, when we start to spend some money. But we're not going to be shy about spending money today, folks. Oh, God. So we've got 43,000 liters of planks and 1,000 and liters of furniture on there. So I cut, I cut. What you didn't see is that the worker just stopped there. It's weird. I don't know what it is. They won't cross these kind of cell points, and, and I don't. It must be something that I have set wrong, anyways. Well, that's a good jump. Uh, it was about two. It was about, probably about two hundred twenty-ish thousand dollars that uh, that we pulled off of those planks, and, and we're not done yet. Um, it's it's selling day for for planks, so we'll be grabbing more. Oh, actually, and on that note too, um, there's another change. So we're we're buying, we're selling, we're harvesting, we're actually expanding a field, and there's a uh, there's one of the OG buildings that's going to be uh, saying bye bye today because it's run its course. You'll see. I was really curious to see what these guys were going to do right now. This is this is two workers going at it right now. So I'm like, who's gonna who's gonna do what here? But man, look at they behaved. I like this shot where you got everybody working in the field. So cool. So I want to say, take a good look at that. Yeah, yeah. See how the, the conveyor or the auger or whatever it's called, it shifted and I didn't notice here. So this is actually going to be... Uh, error and and then fixed uh, in real life that took me a considerable amount of time to figure out exactly what the problem was not always the smartest when it comes to troubleshooting but yeah that somehow it had shifted over a little bit and it wasn't uh, it wasn't it was no longer on the uh, the trigger there so this was fun so I went to go send this tractor home and after a while I went to go check on them and they were in the tunnel. <laughs> like that is, there's no I'm I have no uh you know roots anywhere close to that. And I have no idea how that even happened. <laughs> Super strange. Look at these guys. I just can't say enough how happy I am to actually have this working. It was quite daunting uh, setting it all up. Uh, so I can only imagine what it's like going onto a new map and setting, especially like this is kind of like a no man's land type map where there's not a lot going on. But imagine like, I can't even imagine what it would be like in a city or something where you got to go set it all up. Now I understand that a lot of these maps have preset. Somebody's gone in and created the auto drive course. But I did watch a tutorial, I think it was like Farmer Sim or somebody talking about how sometimes you're better off just setting them all up yourself um, because they're not always set up correctly. So he'll go and spend an hour or two before he even plays a map and sets up all the courses himself. Seems a little excessive, but I don't know. Maybe that's the way to go. So we're at $477,000. Let's keep track of that. As we see our money skyrocket. It's 
funny. I don't like when I talk about new ways of playing. I don't even feel guilty using auto load. If you watch anything else, uh, I avoid it like the plague. But I just, I just love what this series has done. It's a, uh, it's freed me up to do all kinds of stuff like this. Like, you'll see, I'll still load pallets and I'll still load logs and things like that. But God, to just walk up there, hit a button, and have all that stuff hit, it's great. Like the grape juice, oh, what a pain in the butt that is. At like 400 liters per carton or whatever, it's just brutal. But this is fantastic. Now you just hit the button, zip, good to go. So. Uh, there is some storage coming in the near future, uh, but for now I figured we better just get these picked up and moved out of the elements. And I couldn't really think of a better place than right under the, uh, the tunnel, basically. I didn't know where else that I could just pull this through, so we'll just, I mean, this looks sanitary, doesn't it? And when I go to my local grocery store and I buy a cake, I want to know that it was kept in a, uh, a bale tunnel on somebody's farm. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at the money. We're half a million dollars now. I've been, uh, as you may notice, I haven't really posted anything from Hinterland and I haven't posted, oh, a little sneak peek there. I haven't posted anything from the other series that I'm doing, either of them, Valley Springs or Hinterland. I've pretty much just only been playing this game here or this map, uh, Comlands. Uh, and, and so the first time I go to sell something on Valley Springs or Hinterland, it's going to be depressing because they're on both on hard economy. So this is me officially giving up on the, uh, the current, uh, cedar that we have. Um, we've got the custom painted, Whatever this thing is, verse, verse, verstabular, what is this, verstat, verst, verstrand, whatever this thing is. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're giving up on the case, uh, the, the seed drill, or tender, or whatever it is. Enough is enough. I think this is the last load of planks for the day, possibly. Possibly, we'll see. It's not the end of our spending, though, I'll tell you that much. That, uh, that new cedar was not, uh, not where it ends. So that's the, la if I remember correctly, that is the last strip right there of wheat and this field will be harvested, which is pretty cool. I kind of knew this day would come eventually, but it's nice to see it, uh, nice to see it happen. And it's enabled us to, from what I remember, fill, yeah, definitely fill the big bird building and uh, and I think go a long ways to f filling the 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 duckling one. And then we just uh, ram this thing back into its uh, its parking spot, and and that's it. Putting it away dirty. I'd almost say that its days are numbered, but its days are not numbered because when we get the new harvester, I think we'll still keep that. It's kind of nice to know that you can have two running at the same time. This cedar falls slightly outside the required uh, the required horsepower on I think is like 220 or 240 or something, but I decided to take a bit of a chance. I want to say that's what it was. I, I decided to take a bit of a chance anyways um, because I, I just like it as an option. It's like six meter working width and has a reasonable capacity and it uh, works pretty well. But now we're up to $700,000. <laughs> Where's the ceiling? These guys have, uh, these cows have started to produce milk a little faster, I think. I want to say that, I mean, granted I have more cows, but I think maybe, is that true as they mature, they produce milk faster? That was like 13,000 liters I pulled off right there. I think that might've been the biggest haul so far. That's yeah, good though. 
That milk definitely comes in handy. Okay, so I think... So now, those are the last planks, right? No. We have a partial pallet of planks and a partial pallet of furniture, and then we have wood chips. And after that, it's empty. See, we have no more wood in there. Wasn't exactly sure what to do with the wood chips. Look at those, those pylons again. This pylon goes for a bit of a ride, actually. A bit of a hazard. <laughs> Just move it out of the way. I think for some reason, every time I exit the game, they they respawn back where uh, where I had original uh, or where I had initially placed them. So those pylons will just forever be a problem until I decide to sell them. All right, so I mentioned we were going to expand a field, so we're actually expanding uh, the canola field here. I figured we might as well use up whatever real estate we could. I couldn't see us needing too much of this area here. So I figured, you know what, we might as well, might as well take advantage of it now while it's open. It's funny when I think about it, like sometimes when you do a starting from scratch, this is one little area at the end here that I'm expanding the field by is sometimes what your initial starting field is. <laughs> but we're just adding this to the end of this field. I kind of, I, I sort of felt like once we, once I connected these two fields together, um, it still wouldn't be as big as what some of our other fields are. So I felt good knowing that I could kind of expand the end there. <laughs> more, more money. Getting close to a million bucks in the bank. Yeah, so I mean, it's a bit of an unusual shape, this field, but it'll be pretty good. What do you guys do with uh, wood chips? You just sell them or do you make something out of them? And there you go, there's almost 7,000 liters of wood chips right there. And that's all, that's all I could do with them. It's just like, well, might as well plug them there. So the uh, now with the canola field, all, all the straw off it and everything, we can go and figure out what we're going to put into it. Yeah, that's a great trailer. I, I, uh, I do like this cedar compared to the, that case combo way easier to use all right <clears throat> excuse me so i said we were gonna say goodbye to something and it's this well way long ago when we put this in i said it was going to be a temporary building now we're already in we're considered well we're, we're through two full in-game years um july no wait when we hit august i think that's that's the second start of the start of the third year and we finally got rid of that building But it's cool because it's giving us the opportunity to uh, expand the field this way too. So this actually ends up being a pretty good sized field with its mis mix matched soil colors. <laughs> All right, so we'll just get the other end, get the other end done here, and then we can um, we can get all this, we can get some seeds in the ground here. Basically, well, we got to do the 
purchase the soil data. We got to get the lime down. All right, with all that done, we can stash this here. I feel like this is like primo parking locked in here. Kind of too nice to put a cultivator, but I might as well tuck it in there. Keeps it out of the way, and I can't see us making a field in the next couple of minutes. So I'll get that. So I end up buying the field data for these two fields at the bottom. Whether I need it or not, I don't know. I mean, it's like five or $6,000 for the two of them, and to be honest with you, we had like $800,000 in the bank, so I didn't feel too bad spending a couple bucks to get new, fresh soil data that now also included the extra field parts that we made. There's another challenge coming up of which uh, I believe I'll be making, uh, so I might have said too much already, but uh, in that challenge, uh, one of the things I think I'll be doing is making uh, straw silage. That is unless I get into cows, but um, I don't think I'll do the straw processing again because we did it here, but uh, there's a straw silage I believe we'll do in a fermenting silo. So you can really pull a lot of straw off the fields. You just have to have something to do with it. And you can only make so much bedding for your animals. So I took over here just to get this one little section done because uh, the worker not only had missed it, but didn't look like they were coming back for it. There we go. Lime's one of those good messes. If you're going to make a mess, you might as well be a good one. You know you're doing something good for the uh, for the soil. It's funny. Before I knew anything about now, you know, now learning some stuff through farming simulator. I remember I had a neighbor who would always put lime down on his lawn. I want to say the fall before, like before winter. And uh, I don't know. I always just found it very confusing. <laughs> now I'm starting to see. Well, I could see why you'd want to do that. You're obviously controlling the levels in the soil. I think what the lime does also is hides, just hides all the dis discrepancies and dysfunctional areas that we have baked into the field because it's made up of a bunch of different fields. This end down here looks nice. And then I tested this. Um, you know, you wonder, could you still put lime and have it m make a positive impact? But if you look at the mini map down there, when I start putting lime, it goes from what already looks like a healthy green to sort of a, uh, a, a darker green anyways, uh, it contrasts. So, uh, I can only assume that means that I'm, uh, you know, f further benefiting the, uh, the field and the soil. That's a good moment when this guy gets to dig in here. I like that. They don't like the they don't like that hill though. So um, I believe after this, uh, we're going to, yeah, so we got to get this thing unloaded and then we're going to bring this up to the store and sell it and replace it with something else that I have my eyes on. Let's just be able to navigate this thing through town without creating any problems. That'll be the trick. I find if I can afford it, um, doing the repairs at the farm rather than relying on somebody at the track that may or may not know what they're doing. Uh, and there we go. We are back up. And it's starting to rain. <laughs> no. At least the harvesting is done. Now it's just, you know, field work that 
could be really difficult in the mud. I don't really remember what we paid for this stuff, but it's got to still be worth something, I think. We barely used it. 13.5, okay. 29. So around 40, 40 grand, whatever, 43, $44,000. Which we can turn around and purchase ourselves a bigger planter. I didn't test this planter. Required horsepower is well within what our uh, our vehicles are rated at. So by all accounts, it should work. But uh, again, I will say I did not test it prior to purchasing it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I think that looks awesome. Look at this, it just looks so gross. It's about to get muddy here, folks. So not knowing exactly how long this is going to be in the field for, I found myself wishing that uh, we had some more, I found, I found some more tractors. Anyway, <laughs> this this fent with the dualies, uh, front and front and rear duals, is is like uh, perfect for stuff like this. So I kind of found myself wanting another one, and with almost a million dollars in the bank, I figured, you know what, we should get another one. So we did. So I got this one in blackish, blackish, it's almost black. I think it's more like a charcoal color. Get the matching weight. Need those flashing, those need those uh, flashy lights, right? Gotta stop playing around with the logos and just buy it. Perfect. That's going to be perfect for us. Now we have two tractors that'll float over the mud. So I, I asked a worker to bring the new tractor down to the uh, down to the farm for me while I made sure things were still running well here. And sure enough, this guy was already out of fertilizer. trying to use these bags up here so they're not all sitting around. Perfect. There you go. Let's get back out into the field before this thing sinks up to its axles. So I have the mud... I certain I have the mud system mod on. I don't think planting in the rain doesn't affect uh, yield, future yield or anything, does it? We should be okay. Get this thing back in action. Now I know there's a way to Right, I shouldn't I say I know. I, I think there's a way to get a worker to uh Oh hello, welcome to the farm. I think there's a way to get a worker to refill, right? Refill automatically. We'll need to look into that. <clears throat> I had planned dramatic effect with that tractor pulling up right alongside, but I think uh, I was sort of blocking the route by accident. Maybe I think because so I found some some of the courses that I made on this map uh, I made with without the dual wheels. So I think I'm in some cases maybe uh, I don't have the clearance on the sides. So for example, I set up three parking spots right here so I could set something to set it to like send to park one, two, or three, and then it would just come here and park. Um, they're, but they're all supposed to line up, and I think because of the dual wheels it's not lining up properly. I'll probably uh, reiterate I did not test this before purchasing. So I have enough uh, sort of scrap kicking around here uh, ho hoping that uh, we've got enough to fill the uh, the new planter. Uh, there's some seed and fertilizer in here so we'll get rid of that. And we can use that to fill it. It's 
kind of hoping it would empty on the other side so it'd be nice and close, but nope. So I'm going to plant corn in the big field more so because I don't think I've really planted corn if if ever maybe in farming simulator <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I don't remember ever doing like a big corn harvest so uh, but I don't as you've seen I'm not a big fan of just planting harvesting and then selling the the raw crops uh, I would prefer to take that corn that we pull out of the field and do something with it so uh, I don't know what to do yet um, and I believe with what I've recorded so far for this series I don't think I've actually recorded the episode where the corn is ready to harvest so what do you guys think what should I do with this Pro probably dry the corn like it seems like everybody's doing I guess it's worth that much more and then is it just a Polish corn dryer the little little corn dryer or whatever yeah look at that We're working at I think five five kilometers per hour is that right? Is that realistic, maybe? And I'm just used to going way faster? I just kind of thought I'd be going a little bit faster. I thought I'd be going, like, maybe 9, which I know is not a ton faster, but it's still faster. I don't know. A little housekeeping here. Uh, I just kind of... Uh, so the the course that I set up um, for auto drive comes through here, and uh, and I had to go over the grass because so, there wasn't a laneway here, so it kind of bugged me, so I figured we'd expand it a little bit. Spend a couple bucks on landscaping. Next, we gotta take as much TMR as we can and jam it into the cows. Uh, I can't give you the specific moving date yet, but these guys will be moving into a new, a new place, I guess. <laughs> Some new buildings coming, uh, coming very soon to a game play through near you, whatever. sink it's mud just going everywhere I'm pretty sure that if this was real life you wouldn't have a farmer out there spraying uh, herbicide and you probably wouldn't have that guy planting corn in what's inevitably just going to be a big field of slop I don't think but we can do that here Yeah, you see what I mean when I said earlier uh, that we would be accomplishing a lot today? What have we done? We've, so we picked up a, a new cedar, a new planter. We've added a new, uh, a new tractor. That's pretty substantial. We sold the cedar that we were using, that uh, case one. I don't think we really sold much else as far as equipment's concerned. We sold all the planks, some furniture, cake. I mean, we, we were up almost a million dollars in the bank at one point and we got all this equipment. So look, we're $776,000 in the bank and, uh, and we have a, a, a substantial amount of, of new equipment. I think that's kind of a win. This is a, so that TMR, I just set on a worker. Um, I have a loop set up where they can just fill and, and feed and fill and feed and fill and feed back and forth. So that works well for us. I don't really have a great place to stash this stuff right now. I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't anticipate a bunch of bags. Obviously, I um, I guess I could take this stuff and go empty it into the distributor, and then I just have to remember to take from it at some point. But I figured I'll just throw it here. Can't hurt anybody. I mean, we've been using the bulk purchase, obviously, not uh, not bags. So I don't know. Whatever. So yeah, I think we're we're. I know it's only uh, almost three o'clock in the in the afternoon in game, but um, you know there's not a a bunch more that we're gonna accomplish uh, in this game day. Um, I mean, we're gonna be getting close to it's probably about. Uh, you know, I think th this episode will be probably just just under fifty minutes. I think is what we'll end up at. Um, so a little bit more. A little bit, little bit less time, I guess, than, than others, but uh, 
but I think still it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. I'm really happy with course play and auto drive. I can't wait to see what kind of stuff that I can figure out how to do. Um, the next step will be, uh, you know, when you have the, I, I like the idea when you have the bigger harvest where you've got the, the, uh, you know, the truck sitting on the side and then you have the, um, those auger wagons running, running, uh, from the track, from the harvester to the, to the, to the tractor trailer. I think that'll be kind of cool. So maybe we'll do that at some point, but, uh, but yeah, just overall really pleased with how this is all working out. Uh, now in saying that, um, there's no end goal on this series, uh, which so, but I, I do, do not plan to just, uh, play this indef indefinitely. Um, I think this has served a purpose. It has, uh, introduced me to a ton of new gameplay. And, uh, and, and I think I'm going to take that into whatever the next series is. There is, like I mentioned, a challenge coming, um, which you'll see more at some point, a couple weeks into April, that'll start. Uh, so that should be kind of interesting. Um, if you, <laughs> this was a little bit funny. I was just kind of sizing up this, uh, storage, um, building in the back here and, and accidentally my mouse hit my keyboard and it placed it. And then I thought, well, I guess it didn't, didn't do such a bad job. <laughs> I just placed it pretty well. So um, I wanted I wanted somewhere to put the cake anyways. And then I noticed these um, these pallet specific uh, uh, storage buildings. So uh, we're going to set the bakery to distribute cake to the warehouse. And then uh, and then we'll be able to uh, to store a lot of it because we were running out of space in the bakery and then we were having to spawn the pallets. And then the only way we could really store the pallets was in, in either in the, well, we finally stored it in that tunnel, but uh, prior b before that we were storing it behind the actual bakery, which was not very good, but so yeah, so we'll get, uh, we'll get this stuff in here. I'll get, uh, we're going to set this to distribute right now, but uh, we'll get the warehouse loaded up and then uh, I'll kind of get some of the landscaping done around the, around the bakery and then uh, and then that'll be this episode so uh yeah if you can maybe throw me a comment of what you would do with wood chips and then maybe another one with what you think i should do with corn uh, i am 99 percent sure that i have not either sold the wood chips or um or harvested corn yet uh i think i have this is episode 22 i think i have 23 and 24 recorded already um, a little bit quiet lately on the videos but also uh, business is just blown up and, um, honestly, I, 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 as soon as I started trying to figure out course play, I went really deep and started just playing the game and not making any videos, uh, which has been, has been great. And then, uh, just testing on what this other, uh, potential or what will be the next series slash challenge. Uh, again, I, I, I played for like 10 hours on that just to see what I thought of it. So anywho, that's, uh, all I'm going to say today. And, uh, I appreciate uh, appreciate it as usual. I say it every time, but I really appreciate the um, I don't know, the interaction and and the support. And I mean, we're closing in on probably 850 subscribers, somewhere somewhere between 820, around 820 maybe. Uh, but it seems to be climbing uh, steadily. So thanks so much for that. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll leave that there, folks. Uh, so I will do my best to get a few videos out this week, but uh, don't hold me to that. All right, thanks so much. See you later.